Thank you, Robert. Be seated. Just a little moment or two late, I was just hearing a testimony of a the little photographer that's taking pictures around in the campaign. He was telling me he was healed. I prayed for him in 19 and 48, I believe it was. He was a tuberculosis in the hospital and was healed by the power of Almighty God. We're so happy for that. It's a little Spanish brother around here taking pictures. I think he was at the dinner the other night. Or I call that supper. I, I'll never get used to calling it dinner. I just don't need to try. That's right, brother. That's it. You know, if I call that dinner, I've lost a meal somewhere. <laughs> Back in the South, in Kentucky, we have breakfast, dinner, and supper. If you put dinner over where supper is, then where did supper go? So, <laughs> and we don't take the Lord's dinner anyhow. We take the Lord's supper, don't we? That's right. That's right. It's been so nice. I was met some of the people from the meeting here today. Several of them on the street, and, and there. I tell you, it's going to be hard for us to leave this place. This is so nice. The people are nice and friendly, and we certainly appreciate that. And the gifts that the people are giving us. Someone sent us a box of prunes and some uh, peaches in it, dried peaches, and and some uh, walnut kernels, a sack of those, and. Oh, I don't know what all, gifts and so forth. We do appreciate that. I'm wearing a watch tonight that was given to me at San Jose long ago. And I, they didn't even have a name in the box. A person sent me the watch. A fine 19 jewel Elgin. I've wore it ever since. Somebody here at San Jose gave it to me the last meeting. It was just put in some way, and I, I got it, but it's from San Jose. If that person's here tonight. I certainly thank you, brother. I didn't have no name to write back to say thank you, but I'm sure the Holy Spirit makes it known that I appreciate it. I've, the Lord has blessed me many times. I had that on when these last things happened, so I, I was so so glad. Hallelujah. Now, tomorrow morning is the businessman's breakfast. I guess they've announced it and where it will be and what time. And then tomorrow night will be our last night at this campaign, so far as we know, in the building here. Then Sunday afternoon uh, closes the service. We certainly do uh, look forward for a great closing service Sunday. If the Lord is willing, my voice holds up, I want to preach Sunday afternoon on the subject as an eagle stirreth her nest and hovereth over her young. And... Uh, that is, if I can keep enough voice up, <laughs> I uh, kind of take preaching just like it would do anything else. I try to put all my heart, soul, mind, body, and voice in it. <laughs> Maybe sometime it's, it's no place for a joke, but I don't believe in joking from the pulpit. But Brother Bosworth was telling me one time, and many of you knew Fred Bosworth, a saintly, godly person. He said there was a, a colored lady one time asked her minister husband, she said, Honey, said, what did you holler so much for this morning when he was preaching? He said, well, i tell you what it was, honey. He said, all I didn't have in lightning I had to make up in thunder. So maybe, maybe that's just about the way it goes with me a lot of times. Just so the thunder's coming off the right things, I mean, you know, that's what counts. Well, it's, we're fixing to read his word now and try to get just as many into the prayer line tonight as possible. We are here for one purpose, to help you. That's why these people come together. I met Brother Wagner today on the street and his lovely wife. And I was telling him that I, about one of the outstanding things in this area here is the fellowship. I just love that. I've had places where there'd be bigger crowds and so forth. And I, but 
I've never had a place that had any more fellowship. Just looked like everything just one accord. And just I'm I trust my brother. Never let that leave you. Keep that whatever you do. Stay right in that fellowship. I'm a strictly a Kentuckian. Anyone, any four Kentuckians here from Kentucky? Well, you know what the old slogan is: "Together we stand, and divided we'll fall." And that's right. So let's stay together. We got things in common, and that's the Lord Jesus. Let us bow our heads now while we speak to Him in a word of prayer. Gracious Father. The author of life and the giver of all good spiritual gifts, forgive us, O Lord, of our sins and our shortcomings. When we just bow our heads towards the dust, or just something goes through us. We know we are then in the presence of God. For Jesus has told us, if we'd ask the Father anything using His name, He'd be there to hear it and give it. We know that we're talking directly to you, and we had asked for mercy. Many times that we do things and say things, it's not just right. So we pray that you forgive us of those things. Now we have assembled tonight, Lord, for no other purpose but to bring glory to thee, and to speak the word, to preach the word of God, which blesses thy people and brings. Power and faith and joy, eternal life to your children. I pray, Lord, that as I read these words, that you send the Holy Spirit and take the context of the text and with the text and place it into the heart of every person here. May from that placing of the Holy Spirit of those words may it grow and never die. All through the ages that is to come, may it live on, Lord, because it's Your Word. Sink it into my heart in that way. Heal the sick and the afflicted. Give peace to the distressed, for we're living in a distressful time, a perplexive time, distress between nations. We ask for mercy, Lord, and for Thy Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us. And we'll praise thee for it, for we ask it in Jesus' name, Amen. <clears throat> to you who take notice to the scriptures or mark them down, I would like to read from the book of Saint Luke, the 18th chapter and 37th verse. And may the Lord add His blessings. To his word, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by, and he cried, saying, "Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me." We're all acquainted what this scripture is tonight. It was a beggar asking for mercy. We're somewhat like him tonight. I think physical blindness is a horrible thing, but spiritual blindness is worse. Must have been a cold November morning. He was late. He had a bad night. Dreamed all night long that he could see again. He woke up late. Kissed his wife goodbye, and his little girl, and went feeling his way along the street to find the gate entrance because he was late. There's many beggars in the land in that day, and there were so many beggars to the people that could help support them, but just have maybe a coin a day to give to a beggar. Many of them was lepers and blinds and twisted and. Oh, it was a horrible sight! And the first one, the merchant met, or whoever was able to give, why、well, gave his coin, and that settled it for the rest of the day. And 
Barnabas was late. And he'd had a dream all night long that he could see again. And his heart would have been thrilled because he could think back of how things looked. He'd been blind for 20-something years. So he was late and his only hope was to go over to the gate and wait there. Maybe some merchant coming in late might have a coin for him and that's the way he had to live. And there was no one coming, so he goes over and finds him a rock where the sun is warm from after his bare feet had left the cobblestones that led him to the great big arch, the gate of the city of Jericho. Some of the old rocks were still laying around from the ruins when it collapsed and fell in the days of Joshua. The morning sun was rising slowly and the winds were blowing down across the Judean hills and he was ragged and poor and he was wondering what he would do for his winter's wood and for to survive through the winter for his family. And as he sat down on a rock, hooked his rags around him and wrapped up the best he could in the warm sun began to shine. He kind of went to dreaming, daydreaming, thinking, what a dream I had last night. Oh, if it could only be true that I could see again. And as he sat there, he began to think of the days when he was able to see. That had been many, many years for Barney Mayes. He remembered as a little boy how he used to run over the Judean hills there in the early spring and the little buttercups and, and flowers of the spring would come up and he would grab those little flowers and look at them and how pretty they were and his eyes would look towards the skies when it lay down on the warm sun-bathed grass and look up towards the heavens and the blue skies and the white clouds floating by. Oh, what a privileged sight is to a person. But alas, that was long ago and how he used to go and run in here. His mother sat out on the front porch and call his name sweetly and softly. Barty Mayus, it's nap time for my little boy. And he would rush up to his mother as she sat on the front porch and sang the hymns of the Psalms to him and tell him Bible stories until he would fall asleep in her arms. How sitting there now is an old man withered, crunched in the cold. He would think of that pretty Jewish mother. Her eyes just as sparkly how she used to brush the hair back from his little uh, baby forehead and say, Oh, you have such pretty little brown eyes, my boy. And he remembered some of the Bible stories then that she used to tell him. I tell you, the thoughts of a good Christian mother is a treasure to a human heart that's never forgotten. God give us more mothers that'll take their children and instead of trying to teach them tap dancing and something to ruin and wreck their life, will read the stories of the Bible to them and tell them of the God of heaven and peace. God knows that we need that above all things now for motherhood. And as he remembered one story in particular that he loved so well, it was a story his mother used to read him about Elijah, the great prophet, he always liked Elijah because he was bold and had lots of faith and he was an ordained of God, a prophet. And his mother would tell him the story of how there was a, a Shunammite woman who had a lot of confidence in this prophet, Elijah. And how that she was a rich woman and she'd support Elijah to help him. One day she said to her husband, let us 
build just a little chamber on the side of our house. For I perceive that the man who passes this away is a holy man of God. And let us do something for this holy man of God. And how that her husband was agreeable that they should build him a little resting place for his weary, tired body to lay down. And how little Barney Mayus used to think that was so thoughtful of those people to try to do something for God's servants and not thinking for a reward, but just to do something. So one day when Elijah and his friend Gehazi, the servant, passed by, there was a nice little house built or a little room on the side of the house and it had a bed and a water jar with fresh water and a place to little table to eat, and how things were just fixed so comfortable for the prophet until it just blessed him in such a way that the power of the Lord came on him because of the blessing that the woman had showed and the man to him. And they were sh Shunammites. So he said to his servant Gehazi, Go in and ask this woman i just love to come to that. Go ask this woman what she desires. Oh, my. Amen. Go ask her. It must have been a, a great anointing must have struck the prophet. And said, go ask her what would she desire. Should I go speak to the king or to the chief captain? And she said to Gehazi, she said, I don't desire anything. We are wealthy people. We have our home and we have farms and lands and I abide with my people. So I don't desire anything. I don't want any reward. Not even as much as a thank you. The only thing I just done that in respects of God. The God that you serve. And I know that he's with you. And I'm just paying that my tribute to the God of heaven. And when Gehazi came back with such a message to his master, the prophet, and Gehazi kind of put a little secret in his ear and said, You know, she's old, and her husband is old, and they don't have any children. And I believe it would be a blissful thing while that anointing's on you if you would just say to her she's going to have a baby. So Elijah said, go call her. And she stood in the door and he said, thus saith the Lord, you're going to embrace a child. And after the appropriate time of such things, God gave her a sweet little boy. How little Barney Mayus' eyes would look up to Mommy as she told her the power of God who could give that barren woman a child. I just imagine that little Jewish mother put emphasis on that part. How that the great Jehovah God that gave that woman, that sweet little boy to love, gave you to me, Barney Mayus. Oh, that's the way to teach them. He gave me a sweet little boy, and it's you, Barney Mayus. Oh, he'd put his little arms around that loving little mother and kiss her. And then she'd say, now, Barney Mayus, you try to go to sleep while I'm telling you the rest of the story. And she'd rock him back and forth in her arms. And here he was now, old and wrinkled and blind and miserable and an outcast to the public and societies and... Seemed like no one cared for him. What a miserable place to get in. But remember, there's one who cares. I don't care what condition you're in. There's one who cares. He was watching Barney Mayus. Then just, he said then, one day this little boy was out in the field with his papa. Just like you go out, Barney Mayus. And you know, he must have got a sunstroke. 
because it was hot and it was around noon time and harvest time too. And so he began to cry, my head, my head. So he had a servant to take him into his sweet mother and she set him up on her lap and she tried to do all she could to bathe his little face with cold water, but his breath got shorter and shorter and finally ceased to breathe and he straightened his little arms and legs out and shut his little eyes and died. And she might have said something like this, but Barney Mayus, you remember that woman knowed God. So she took the little boy and put him on the bed that the prophet slept in. What a place to put him. Laid him up on the prophet's bed. And all was lamenting and going on and her husband just about wild and all the neighbors are screaming and are crying. But she said to the servant, saddle me up a little mule and you get on one too. And let's go straight to Mount Carmel, where the prophets hid off yonder in the den somewhere praying. And don't you stop unless I tell you to. That's the way. The message is urgent. Don't stop. Keep going. Amen. Just keep moving. We haven't got time for socials and picnics and card parties and things. The message is urgent. Let's get to God with it quickly. The world's a dying. And on they rode. And then she'd say, you know, Elijah looked out of his cave and he noticed that here come the woman on the mule and the servant running as hard as he could. And he said, here comes that Shunammite. And God has hid from me her troubles, but I see that she's in trouble. Now she might have said something like this. Barney Mayus, you see, God doesn't reveal everything to his prophets. He just reveals what he wants them to know. Because here was a woman, her baby was dead, and God had kept it all a secret from Elijah. He said, the Lord has hid it from me. So the woman come up and reverent, she bowed down before the prophet and began to reveal to him that her baby was dead. And he told Gehazi, take my staff and go to the baby. If anybody speaks to you, don't speak back. Just go straight and do what I tell you. Now, I think there's where Paul got laying on handkerchiefs on the sick. Now, the prophet knew that everything that he touched was blessed. He knew that if he could only get the woman to believe it and said, take my staff and lay it on the child. But the woman's faith wasn't in the staff, it was in the prophet. And she said, I'll not leave you. I'm determined to stay with you and hold on till I find out why God took my baby. She knew if she ever got to him that God would reveal it, why he took the baby. I like that determination too. She was determined to hold on to it. When you something's wrong and you can't understand, take a hold of God and hold on to Him till something answers. Just don't be, well, I prayed last night and I haven't heard yet, so I guess He doesn't answer no more. Hold on to Him. Just keep holding on. I'll not leave you. Be like Jacob, wrestle all day and night, as he did with the angel. I'll not leave you. And the prophet seen he couldn't get rid of her, so I guess the only thing to do is go with her. So he got his coat and put it on, and away they went. And when they got to the place, they met Gehazi. And he said, I put the staff upon the child, but there was no breath or nothing. So what a condition. Everybody's screaming, the neighbors are crying, and... Elijah went in and put everybody out. Then I can see little Barney Mayus' eyes say, Then what happened, Mama? Well, the prophet, did he go to fasting and praying? No, Barney Mayus, he just walked up and down in the room. 
back and forth until the Spirit come on him. And when the Spirit come on the prophet, he laid his self on top of the little boy, his lips to the little boy's lips, and he sneezed seven times, and Jehovah raised that little boy up to life again. Oh, Barney Mayus, about that time, a cold breeze came down, and he, he shivered. Oh, he thought, wasn't that wonderful? And just think now that that Elijah and Elisha, his successor, passed within 20 feet of where I'm sitting here many years ago, arm in arm, going down over them same stones that I walked over this morning. They walked arm in arm right down this road, going down and he took his coat and opened up Jordan and stepped across. Oh, what if I would have been sitting here then, blind and miserable and shivering in the cold and needy. I would have run out into the street and have stopped them and said, Oh, great prophets of God, pray the Lord and He'll give me back my sight. But alas, it's too late now. The priest tells us that the days of miracles is gone long ago. There's no such a thing as that anymore. That was for another age. There can be no supernatural in this day. It's nothing to it. So all those things that once God did, somehow or another he must have went upstairs and went to bed or something. He just doesn't care for his people. He lets us run it the best that we can. So there's no more days of miracles. Oh, that was a horrible thing. And he said, now, if I would have been here when they come by, I would have had one of those prophets to ask God. I would have been satisfied. I would have got my sight. Just then he hears something coming. I can see him as he rises. He listens. He hears the clicking of the little hoofs on the big cobblestones that led into the gate. And he heard the padding of a sandal in front of it and two men talking. So it must be a rich man. His transportation was by a little mule. The poor had to walk. But this man could afford a burrow. So he, he was, he ran out quick and he said, Oh, kind sir, I was late this morning getting to my begging place. And I do not have a coin and I've got a family to feed. Would you be so kind as to give me a coin? Then a real rough voice spoke out, said, I am the servant of the Lord. I'm on my way to Jericho. There is some fanaticism going to start up this morning, and I'm the head of the ministerial association down there. And we'll not have any of these here so-called prophets in our fine country. So we're down, I'm on my way. I'm on the Lord's business. So out of my way, beggar. I must be on my way. And the poor beggar gathered up his rags again, and he fumbled around till he found his rock. But it, it was then the sun was shining across and reflected a shadow. The sun had rose a little higher, turning around. So he goes out a little farther. We can see him fielding until he found a, a large stone again. And he sat down and leaned back against the stone near the wall where the sun had come around to give light on that side and warm. It was awful cold that morning, so he pulled up his clothes around his shoulders again, and he began to dream again. And he began to think the other story that I like so well that Mother used to tell me was just about 500 yards from here when Joshua the great warrior, the servant of the Lord, the mighty one who succeeded Moses, the great general, stood on the banks just across. Oh, how I remember looking at the place when I was a little boy, sitting up on the hill here when Mama was rocking me and she'd point her beautiful hand. And right yonder, 
Joshua stood and the Jordan rolled back. And our people come over across the sea or across the waters on dry land in the month of April when the storms and had been up in the mountains of Judea and all the, the bottoms were flooded with water and the great muddy waters rolled and God rolled them back and they stayed there until two and a half million people crossed over. Amen. 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 Some of these days i got to come down to my Jordan. You've got to come to your Jordan. Oh, I want him to stay the muddy, dirty waters of death walk across on the wings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He'll send the morning star to light up the way just across the hill down to Barney Mays. It's where that happened. And then when Israel had passed over, the fear was upon Jericho until the gates were all shut up and they camped and put the ark of the Lord exactly in its place. And then they waited on the Lord. That's a good thing to do. Move just as far as God lets you move and then wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they fixed everything in preparation and then waited. One day the great mighty warrior Joshua the general was walking out over against the walls one day, looking around. And he looked standing on a little hill. There stood a mighty-looking man with his sword out of the sheath and up in his hands and glistening in the sunlight. Joshua, being a warrior, jerked his own sword from the sheath and started a meeting. He said, Who are you? Are you for us? Are you for our enemy?" Then the voice come back from the stranger. He said, I am the captain of the host of the Lord. I am the Lord's captain over his host. The mighty Joshua threw his sword to the ground and jerked off his helmet and fell on the ground with his hands in his face and worshipped the Lord. Oh, said blind Barnabas, I only wish I could have lived in those days. What if I'd have been standing right here then? And I'm, I'm an Israelite. I'm an heir of all those blessings. I, I, all those things belong to me. And if I'd have been standing here, I'd have spoke to the Lord's captain. <laughs> And he would have given me back my sight. And I would have went out and made an honest good living for my family. But alas, those days are gone. What happened to the captain of the Lord's host? Little did the blind beggar know that that same captain wasn't a hundred yards from him. It's when we think on him is when he draws near. When our hearts are stayed on Him, the thoughts of our hearts are constantly upon Him. That's when He draws nigh unto us. When we draw nigh unto Him, He shivered a little. He thought, oh, if I could have only seen that captain. But coming right along the street, coming out of the gate, come that same captain. Only in another form. And he heard a noise. Usually where that captain is, there is a lot of noise. He heard some noise. And he wondered what it was all about. And just in a few moments, the whole place was covered, completely covered with people. And he began to hear all kinds of voices. One saying, Hosanna to the King of David, the Son of David. Others hold a screaming Away with that fanatic. He is nothing but a fake healer. He's a devil. He's possessed with bells and bells above. And there's nothing to him. He's nothing but a false teacher. Away with him. And poor blind Barney Mayus began to wonder 
What's all of this about? Then he heard that priest that had spoke to him a few hours before saying, Say, you Galilean so-called prophet, if you raise the dead like you said you did, raise a Lazarus from the grave, we've got a whole graveyard full of them up here on the hill. Let's see you come raise some of them. You know, that devil isn't dead yet either. He still lives. That's right. Let us see you do something. Jesus never even paid any attention to him. And if he didn't then, neither does his people today. Let him holler his head off. We don't care. We walk in the Spirit of the Lord. They were hitting with overripe fruit making fun of him and others screaming and crying and shouting and it was a mixed multitude and wherever you find Jesus you find that same thing the gospel attracts a mixed multitude three different classes of people a believer a unbeliever and a make believer that's usually what's in the multitudes and there they was all of them just to carry on and he raised up and he said, Who is this? And someone said, Shut up! I'll have the priest to throw you out of the synagogue. Sit down! I'd like to know, he said, who this man is that's got all this emotion stirred up. And they could not get no one to listen to him. And they heard the snarls of the priest again. And some woman was going to have a fake washing his feet and all so forth, making fun of him, just like they do today, the same thing. You know, God takes his man, but never his spirit. The devil takes his, but never the spirit. The same spirit lives on among the people. That is true. God took Elijah, but the spirit come up on Elisha. God took Elisha, it come on John the Baptist. Them spirits does not die. And he took his son, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost come on the church. Amen. Those critical spirits of those unbelieving priests still live today among the people. Religious spirits criticizing, making fun. But as Jesus was at that day, so is he today. The same yesterday, today, and forever. He goes on about the Father's business. The church of the living God shall prevail. They'll move forward. Jesus had the whole burdens of the world upon him. He was headed right then for Jerusalem to be made a sin offering for the world. He being the Son of God, the anointed Messiah, certainly he knew what was coming a little while ahead of him. Going on his road right then to die for the sins of those people. And then going on like that to him. His head was set straight towards Jerusalem. He went marching on. He never listened to their scoffs and carry on. He never paid any attention that he moved on. And all at once there was a, a lady stooped down and picked up our old blind beggar friend. And he said, thank you, kind miss. You seem to be so kind. I would like to ask you one question, if it is, my dear child. What's all this commotion about? Who is it that passes this away? Oh, I can hear her say, it is Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet of Galilee. Have you not heard of him? No, I have. Oh, then comes in his mind. It comes to his remembrance. That his mother told him that someday the Lord our God, the Lord our God will visit his people and he'll send forth his son and that'll be the prophet that Moses spoke of. He'll be a God prophet when he comes. Oh, then his hopes begin to rise. Oh, then he noted he'd be a son of David to him being a Jew. He'd be the son of David. And he knew if he was a prophet that he could surely touch God through him. So he cried and he said, Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, 
have mercy on me. And the young lady said, oh, sir, I am one of his disciples also. Oh, then that's the reason you're so kind. You know, the disciples of Jesus is kind and considerate, full of love and compassion, trying to help somebody, trying to help somebody to find Jesus. And she said, oh, sir, hold on to my arm. I'll try to take you to my master. That's a real Christian. Not try to send him back, but try to take him on. And the blind beggar tried to hold her arm, but he was moved so far down the road until it was impossible with the crowds of pushing in him blind and her just a woman and him helpless. So they couldn't make it. So he began to scream as loud as he could. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, he could not hear him physically. He had done past the gate. And all that multitude, some screaming one thing and uh, others screaming something else. And if you want to hear some real screams, get the Jews upset once. And you can hear some carrying on, some confusion. One saying one thing and one another, making fun of him. But something had happened in Barnabas' heart. The thing, the story that mother had told him was at the tips of his fingers. And if he's a God prophet, then he can hear, Oh, thou son of David, he fell on his knees and said, Have mercy on me. Jesus and all of his rushed to Jerusalem, going to Calvary with the whole sin of the world laying upon him. Something touched him. He wasn't in too big a hurry. But when that kind of a touch touches him, he turned, not from hearing his voice, but the same way the woman touched him, it had the blood issue. He turned and looked and said, bring him here. Oh, tonight, with all the millions of worlds and all the billions of people and the coming of the Lord at hand and everything, you can touch him tonight with the feeling of your infirmities. He's still the same Lord Jesus. He never fails. Oh, thou son of David. And someone said, the Christian said, Be of a good cheer, he calleth thee now. Come on, he's bid you to come to him. Let's see what he'll say. And he walks close to him and he said, What would you that I would do for you? He said that I might receive my sight. Now, if he had faith enough to stop him, faith of the power of faith to go way out there and touch the border of his garment as it was with that woman and stop the Son of God with all the burdens of the world upon him, going to be crucified amongst all that mass of screaming and crying and confusion, he had faith enough to be healed. Jesus said to him, Thy faith has saved thee. Jesus didn't have to tell him, say, I'll heal you. Jesus told him that his faith was sufficient. His faith that made him whole. Amen. That's the same tonight. Your faith that makes you whole. Have faith in God. Don't doubt him. Believe that what he said is the truth. Your faith tonight can touch him just the same as Barnabas' faith touched him. Thy faith has saved thee. The Greek word sozo means physical saved, just the same as spiritually saved. Thy faith has saved thee. Then I can see him turn. He didn't wait to see if he's going to receive his sight. He knew he would receive his sight. And the crowd went on. And Barney Mayer stands there, looking around, looking for his hand. He told me that my faith, and I believe that that's the Son of God. He told me my faith would save me. I was reading here some time ago an article. It might have been fiction, and it could have been true. It could have come from some of the chronicles. But it said that Barney Mayus was a 
a real poor man, but he was a staunch believer in God. And he used to sit by the gate with two little turtle doves that would do little tumbles back and forth to attract the att- tourist's attention. If they didn't have something to attract the attention, they didn't get any coins. That was made so real to me when I was recently in India. Everyone has to have a something. They have a pipe that they'll play and a cobra will rise up. Uh, uh, or something, or, or a little monkey with a stick to uh, play some tricks or to, to beat him or something. To uh, do a little something to, then to beg, to earn a coin. Well, Barney Mayus, they say, had two little turtle doves that done little tumbles over each other. And the people thought that was cute, so they would give him a coin. So they said one night, he had a little girl that was about eight years old and, and a, a wife. So his wife got sick and Barney Mayus went outside and after the doctor had left and said there's nothing could be done for her, he knew she was a good woman, so he went out, felt his way alongside of his house and looked up with his, towards the skies and said, Oh, Jehovah, if you just let my wife get well, I promise you tomorrow I'll sacrifice my turtle doves to you. I'll give my two turtle doves to you for a sacrifice if you'll just let her get well. And as the legend or whatever it may be goes on to say that his wife was well the next morning. He goes and offers the two little turtle doves. And then a few weeks after that, that his little girl got sick and also given up by the doctor. So he didn't have anything to offer the Lord but his lamb. Now, I can't call the name what they call these dogs that lead the blind. Seeing eye dog. Well, in those days, instead of using a dog, they had a lamb that led the blind. And the Barney Mayus had a lamb because he lived way around the hills of Judea, and he and he had the lamb had to lead him down to Jericho. Was the only means he had of getting there. And he said to the Lord. If you just let my little girl live, then tomorrow I'll sacrifice my lamb for you. And the next morning, the little girl was well. And he went on his road up to the temple to sacrifice his lamb. And said the priest walked out and said, Blind Bartimaeus, where goest thou this morning? And he said, Priest, I'm coming to the temple to sacrifice my lamb because my little girl was sick and the doctor said she was going to die. So I I come to sacrifice my lamb as I promised him. Oh, he said, Barney Mayus, you cannot sacrifice that lamb. I'll give you some money and you go to to the stalls and buy a lamb. And sacrifice to the Lord and keep your vow. Oh, he said, but priest, I never promised God a lamb. I promised him this lamb. That's what we must do. I promised him this lamb. Oh, but he said, Barney Mayus, you cannot offer that lamb. That lamb is your eyes. He said, oh, priest. If I'll keep my promise to God, God will provide a lamb for blind Barnabas' eyes. And on this cold November day, God had provided a lamb for his blinded eyes. I want to say tonight, as I'm watching that clock yonder, that same lamb of God. God is provided for you tonight, my friend. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon Him, and with His stripes you were healed. God's got a lamb provided tonight.
for all the sickness that's in here, for all the sin that's in here. It's the same Lamb that took care of Bartimaeus' eyes is here tonight to take care of yours, my sister, in that wheelchair. To you, mother with the baby on your lap. To you others here with TB and, and with heart trouble and with all kinds of afflictions and diseases. God has provided for himself a lamb. That lamb is here to free you. Will you believe him? Could you touch him as he passes by? Thou Lamb of God, have mercy on me and hold on to it. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, said Flanny Crosby. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Thou the stream of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee, or whom in heaven but thee? That's it tonight. The Lamb is provided. If you have a need, look to Jehovah Jireh, who provided the Lamb. While we bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Would you like to be remembered? Raise up your hands. Say, O Lamb of God, I raise my hands to you. I have need that I don't pass me, Lamb of God. Heavenly Father, O Thou Son of David, Thou Jesus of Nazareth, I pray Thee to look down upon this audience and look at those hands. Don't pass them, Lord. They're deeply insincere. Look upon our nation today and our people, how they've been so confused and tore up. And there's some hardly knows how to believe or what to believe. Different teachers has come in saying those things were another age. All the days of miracles has passed and so forth. But, oh God, while we're speaking about you, Draw nigh unto us. Come in the form of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Make known to us all thy blessings. Heal the sick. Save the lost. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Oh, isn't he wonderful? When I get speaking about him, it just seems like the inside of my soul just gets like scoured out. Mama used to take our little old dirty shirts when we were little children and we'd get the collars so dirty and I don't know whether you did or not, I used to chew on my collar. And Mama used to take this old scrub brush, I, don't, I haven't seen one in years, great big old scrub brush. And she'd get that old homemade soap, and we had to make it out of grease, and she'd rub it on there and take this scrub brush, and she'd scrub it and scrub it till it was just as white as it could be. Oh, that's the way uh, talking about Jesus does. It is something like God gets in there with a scrub brush and just scrubs out all my disappointments and all my cares and, and just makes me feel so clean. God is going to do that to you, just cleans us out. His Holy Spirit comes down and sanctifies us and takes all the unbelief away from us. That's my prayer tonight, that He do that for us. I cut just a little short tonight on my message because tomorrow is the breakfast and we got to go early. And then I wanted to pray for all the sick tonight that had prayer cards. I promise to do it, and I'm afraid I'll let it get by. So now while we are, I believe we've got out A, B, C, and D prayer cards. Now all the people that's holding prayer card A, come over here to the right. All of you that's got prayer card A, no matter what number it is, come over first. Now if someone will go down and help down there. All the people holding prayer card A. Get your line right here.
How many is going to pray now for these people? We're expecting God on this line. I'm going to put everyone in here that I can. Prayer card B. How many has prayer card B? All with prayer card B. Line right up behind A. Prayer card A and B. Just line right up. No matter what numbers, just we want to get all the prayer cards lined up. Just come according to your number and according to the letter. that beautiful? You know, that's what brings the Holy Spirit to me quickly. That I only believe. How many knows who wrote it? My friend, Paul Rader. A, B, C. How many has prayer card C now? Now you stand up. Only believe. Let's sing it softly. Oh, I can just see him coming down off the mountain. The wind blows. I see his beard move. And here comes the disciples. Remember, they had been given power to cast out devils, but they were stalled on an epileptic. They couldn't do it. Now prayer card A, B, C... Now, D, prayer card D, you line up over here. Anybody that has a prayer card in the building, just find your place, line up. Every prayer card in the building. I look around and see if anybody's got a prayer card, maybe deaf, you know. Any one of your neighbors holding a prayer card, someone sitting there, why, tell them, take them over and put them in the line, because that's... That's your place now. This is for the prayer cards, as we promised. Then tomorrow night, we can go right back in again to something else. We don't know what the Holy Spirit is going to do. Notice him, he come down. The disciples, about ten days before there, Jesus said to his disciples, I give you power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers, to cast out devils. Matthew 10. He sent them out. They come back rejoicing with that power. They've done miracles. Just about ten days later, we find them all defeated on an epileptic case. No doubt they'd screamed and cried and shouted and everything else to get that devil to leave, but he wouldn't do it. So then the father of the boy, he saw him coming, and he ran to him and he said, Lord, be merciful to us. He said, I brought my boy to your disciples, and they could not heal him. And Jesus said, I can if you believe. And all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible to, if you will believe me, I can do it. They could do it. He gave them the power. Later, they asked, why couldn't we do it? Did he say, now listen close, did he say, I took my power back from you? No, no. When God gives you anything, that's forever. I, he didn't take it. I can show you where God gave the church power to heal the sick. Now you show me the scriptures where he took it away from the church. Give me the scripture, the verse. It isn't there. When God does anything, it's eternal. It's forever. When he gives you eternal life, that's forever. 
Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. That's right. Now notice, it's eternal life. Now notice, the disciples, he said, it was because of your unbelief the reason you couldn't cast him out. Is that right? Because you didn't believe, not because you didn't have the power. Now to you Methodists, Lutheran, Baptist, Presbyterian, the reason you don't have do these things in your church, it isn't because you don't have the power, it's because you don't believe it. That's all. Just because you don't believe it. If you'd believe it, the same thing would happen. The Pentecostals don't own this altogether. Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost is an experience. See? It's an experience. The Lutheran Pentecost, the Baptist Pentecost, the Catholic Pentecost. Anyone who receives the Holy Ghost is Pentecost. It's a Pentecostal experience. When you receive the experience of Pentecost, the power is within you. That's right. Now, if you've got faith in what's in you, it'll do anything you ask. Oh, my. Oh. That's it, brother. That's it. Pentecost is in us. Just don't be afraid. When a Christian gets saved, God gives him a checkbook. And on the checkbook is wrote out, Anything you have need of, lay it on my account. The Son of God, Jesus Christ. Are you afraid to you put your name on and send it in? <laughs> no, don't be afraid. It's anything that He promised. Just remember, it's yours. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? Well, if you can call to God, and He's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, why don't you just send up a little message to Him now? Send up one of those checks and say, Lord, let me touch your garment. Speak to me like you did the woman at the well. Some of you women do that. Some of you men call like blind Barnabas. Oh, speak, Lord. Turn around and ask me. Speak to me. Call me. I'll believe you. Can you do that? Would it take all doubt out of your mind? Is there any strangers here was never here before? Raise your hand. Strangers, yes. Each night there is. All right. Jesus didn't heal people. He only healed as God showed him to heal. How many knows that? St. John 5, 19. The Son can do nothing but what He sees the Father doing. And then when He stood before the people, well, He could tell them, reason they know that He was the Son of God and was the prophet that Moses spoke of because He was a God prophet. See, the reason I say prophet, God prophet, that don't seem to take too well with you. Maybe I better explain it. Jesus was a man. He was just a man, a virgin-born man. That's right. He was the Son of God. His Father was Jehovah God Almighty. That's right. And then Jehovah built him a house, which was his Son, to represent himself to the world. And God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Is that right? That was God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now, we have the Spirit... By measure. He had it without measure. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelt within the Son of God. Now, His self, He was a man, but the Spirit that was in Him was God. You are man. These are man. I'm a man, but the Spirit in us is God. But we have it by measure. Now, if I went out here in the ocean and picked up a spoonful of water, now, like all the ocean, that's what was in Jesus. The fullness of God. But what's in me and you is just little spoonfuls. But if you took that spoonful of water to the, to the laboratory and tested it, the same chemicals that was in the spoonful would be what was in the ocean. Yeah. That's right. The same kind of chemicals. Is that right? Yeah. The same Holy Ghost saying, Amen. Amen. And with your spoonful and my spoonful and their spoonful and all of it put together, we can do things for God if we'll just Amen. let it flow together. Amen. It'll bring the presence of God. Amen. 
Amen. Now pray. The woman touched his garment. You touch his garment. Now, I don't aim for this to be a line of discernment. I want the discernment line out here, where there's no prayer cards. These here, someone said, Brother Branham has a telepathy that reads it off the prayer card. You know better than that, don't you? <laughs> sure you do. Now, you don't have any prayer card, do you? Now, let's see what this is. You just talk to the high priest, saying, God, let me be assured tonight. You just let Brother Branham speak to me. See if he speaks to you. Now, Lord, this is a great thing. I don't say this. Only I'm bragging in Christ. That's all my brags. Because I want these people, they're strangers in the gates tonight. And maybe this may be the last time we'll get to meet each other. But when we come there at the gate that day, I want them to know, Lord, that you're just ready to come to the earth. We believe it. We believe that you promised these things in the last days. They have a right to come and see it because they are partakers of the same Spirit. Let them come now, Father, and I pray that you'll grant all these things that we've asked. May across this building, you know the people know their need. Get to someone, Lord, who really needs you just now. And these in the prayer line, that's standing here with prayer cards, let them cross then, having faith in God, knowing that the Holy Spirit is upon your servant. And upon all your servants here, that they may have faith in the God that is present, even the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, isn't that a statement to make? Why do I say that? Because God promised it. He keeps His promise. He cannot fail. His promises is always true. Just pray. Has anybody ever seen the picture of the light, the angel of the Lord, the pillar of fire? It's, they got it. Scientists has it. Washington has it. Now the church has got it in reality. They got on a picture. You've got it in reality. It's here with us. It's leading us. Just as it led Israel. It's still leading the church. Jesus said, I come from God. Do you believe that Jesus was that... Was that burning bush that Moses was out there? You believe that was Christ? It was the, the angel of the covenant, the Logos that went out of God, Christ. When he was on earth, he said, before Abraham was, I am. You know who I am was? He said, I come from God and I go to God. Now, if this angel that you're with, if he's the same one that was in Christ, the Logos was in Christ. If that's in us, it'll do the same thing that it did when it was in Christ. Is that right? Just can't be done. Here. Right here. Can't you see that light? Look here. Hanging right here. It's right over a colored woman. Sitting right here. She's praying about her eyes. She's got trouble with her eyes. That's right, isn't it, lady? Raise up to your feet. You were sitting there praying for that, wasn't you? You have your request. Go home. Jesus Christ makes you well. Just have faith. Right back here. A lady sitting there, Spanish looking. She has a red coat on. She's from Arizona. She has complications. That's right. This is Fernandez. It's correct. You're nervous, have depressed feelings, nervous and tore up. Return home to your home. It's left you. Your faith has made you whole. That you might believe me to be his servant. 
there's a little Mexican woman sitting by you. She's got something on her arm like a cast. That really isn't her trouble. It's the domestic troubles what's bothering her. That is right, isn't it, lady? Raise up your hand if that's true. Now go and may God give you, women, the desire of your heart. Amen. Tell me what they touched. What did they touch? They touched the high priest. I don't know them, never seen them in my life. They're total strangers to me. What about you, the white woman sitting here? Got trouble with your head and a nervous, depressed feeling. That's right, you sitting right there. That's right, raise up to your feet. Claim your healing. I don't know you do, a lady. All right, go home and receive your healing now. That thrill, that little lady sitting next to you so bad. I don't know you do, a lady. No. You believe God can tell me now while we're in contact with the Spirit, like the woman at the well? You believe God can tell me what your trouble is? You can? Diabetes. That's true. That's right, isn't it? Stand up on your feet and accept your healing. I don't know you now, but that's what your trouble was. I see you've got some more trouble, too. That trouble's with a man. That's your husband. He's at home. He has a stroke. He's been operated on also. That's thus saith the Lord. You believe now? Return home. Be made well. Jesus Christ, make you well. You believe? Somebody else believe? This man sitting here with the gray suit on is kind of looking, kind of wondering. What do you think about it, sir? You believe? You don't know what to do, do you? Maybe if I'd tell you, if you'd believe right now, that heart trouble would leave you. What about that? Would you believe it with all your heart? You do believe it now? Raise up your hands then and get out of that old stoop. Come on. Raise up to your feet and accept your healing and be made well. Jesus Christ heals you. Amen. What a feeling that is. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. Go home. See, it just takes a little something to happen to you. What would you think about it? You helped him up there, lady. That's a nice thing to do, sitting next to him there. That's very nice. I appreciate that. So did God. I don't know you, do I? But God does know you, doesn't he? You're in trouble also. Isn't that right? You believe God can tell me what your trouble is? With all your heart? Well, you just have complications. The doctor don't even know what to say is the matter with you. You've been in and out of hospitals and operations and everything. Isn't that right? Now, if that's true, stand on your feet. If you believe Jesus makes you well now, raise up your hand and say, praise the Lord. All right, go home and be well. The hospital days are over for you. You believe God? Lady sitting there shaking her head right back there, just so it's thrilled with the presence of God. Got a hernia. You believe that God will make you well? It's got a little white collar or something other around like that. When you're shaking your head just like that, like that, praising God, something come over you, didn't it? That's in that light standing right over you now there. Amen. There it is. Believe it. Accept it. Go home and believe it and you'll get well. Amen. Do you love him? Say, praise the Lord. Now, have faith in God. Now what's the prayer card got to do with it? So when that critic tells you anything like that, you just take your head and point it towards Calvary and keep moving on. You touched his garment. He's here. The Son of God. Amen. Now that makes me so weak you can see the perspiration on my hands. It's visions. Now, to you in the prayer line here, let's just pass you. And all you people out there, now you appreciate out there so much. Now, will you help me pray? All you ministers and everybody help me pray for these people. How many will pledge their prayer to these people? Raise up your hand. Pledge their prayers. Now, brethren, remember, not only my prayer, your prayer. Your prayer. The prayer of the faith shall save the sick. All of you pray together while we 
pray and pass these people down the line here, asking God to bless them and heal them. Now, you pray with me. All you people go to believe now as you pass through. All right, believe with all your heart. You shall receive what you ask for. Now, you're aware that the Holy Spirit's here. But if I stop with each one of you, I'd faint in the, after a few. How many knows that that's Bible? Daniel saw one vision and it troubled him at his head for many days. Is that right? A one woman touched the bar of his garment just like you did and he said, I perceive that what? Virtue, strength has gone from me. That was the Son of God. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Why could it be more? Because he said, more than this shall you do for I go unto my Father. It's to fulfill his word week now. So pray with me. You all believe with me. When we come by, the Holy Spirit here, know that He's going to do it. Let us pray now. Now, sister, you believe God's going to heal you? Lord God, make her well, I pray in Jesus' name. Come, my brethren. All this great ransomed church of God's praying for you. In Jesus' name, I speak this wonderful name over you. May be he be. Now, sister, it's going to be right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her be healed. It's got to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be. That's the way. You have it, sister. Go on your own rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be, Lord, for healing. Come, my sister. A little disappointed recently. It's all over now. Born here. Thank you, In Jesus' name, let it be. Amen. Let you. Come, my brother. Come as to Him. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let it be. Glory to God. Come, my brother. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be that my brother be healed while this great ransom church is praying for you. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be that our sister be healed. Amen. Come believing, my sister, dear. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be while all this church is praying for her, May not one doubt. May she as Barnabas of old cry out, Thou Son of David, in Jesus' name. Praise you. Praise you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be that our sister be made whole. Amen. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let our brother be made whole. Dear God, our Father, while we are uh, conscious of your presence, the Spirit of God breathe into the lips of hundreds of people now. Let our sister be healed. Amen. There's a sister come walking on a cane now. Everybody in prayer. Now believe. Dear God, while I lay hands upon her representing the prayers of all this church, let her be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be done. Amen. Dear God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be done. Amen. Come, my brother. Dear God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be done, our brother be healed. Amen. Leave it, my brother. Amen. How do you do? That's an awful thing, isn't it? Coughing, going on. But Jesus Christ knows your condition, doesn't he? You believe he'll make you well? Yeah, let it be, Father, in Jesus' name. You believe, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, God our Father, let it be that his healing comes now. Amen. 
How do you do? God, our Father, thanking my own little Sarah at home, I pray that you'll heal the child in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, let it be this hour that our sister will be healed. Amen. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let our sister be healed. Amen. Come, my brother. God, our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, let our brother be healed this time. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, as our sister comes by, feeling that anointing upon her, let it be over now, Lord, should be healed. Come, um, brother. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let our brother be healed. God bless you. That could cause you a lot of trouble in the back. But if you believe that God will make you well, that's what causes epilepsy and everything comes to You believe that He'll make you well. God, our Father, I pray that you'll help this boy now. It's kind of trembling, but believe that you'll make him well. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I just thought maybe that helped him just a little bit. I didn't mean that anyway, but you just need a little... You understand? God, touch the little boy, I pray that you'll make him well. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, bless the woman in Jesus' name. God, our Father, I pray for our sister that you'll heal her and make her well. In Jesus Christ's name. God, our Father, bless this little girl and make her to be well, Father. Is this anointed church in the presence of the Holy Ghost, Christ. God, let it be so now that she'll be well. Amen. Brother Pete, I know you. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal my precious brother. I pray that he'll be made well from this hour on. Amen. God bless you, Lord. God bless you, brother. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, giver of all good gifts, let my brother be healed from this hour on. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Bless you, my Would there be in the presence of this... See how the Holy Spirit anoints different? Just now, it seems like he's a... Like a... Like a hush. Hush. God speaking, doing things. How many believes that every one of those people were healed? I believe with all my heart they were healed. Would there be a sinner in here who would like to walk up and be healed now from his sins? Would you come forward? Sinner friend, while we sing one verse of down at the cross where my Savior died, down there for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. Will you come and stand here, you that's seeking God? that wants to be saved from your sins, I give you this opportunity. I just listen, sinner friend. You who are frustrated, don't know just how you do stand. Can't you see that it's the Spirit of God moving among His people? Man can't do these things. It takes God to do these things. And that's Him reflecting Himself to His church. Now, will you come stand here and let us pray for you just a few minutes while we sing, and I'm going to... Pray then for these handkerchiefs that's laying here. All right. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down there for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was a blood of life. Glory to His name. Won't you come? God bless you, sir. Oh, glory to... God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. Come right on up this way. That's right. Come right up. That's fine. God bless to His precious name. There to my heart was a blood of light. Glory to His name. Oh, come, 
to this fountain so rich. God bless you, sister, coming there. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge into. Won't you come on now? Rise right up in your seat. Come. Lead. That's good. They're just keep coming. Just keep coming. Follow the leading of the Spirit. Name or oh, glory to His name, precious name. Glory to His precious name. Oh, there to my heart was a blood of light. Glory to God bless you. God bless you. Each of you coming. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweet, Leah. That's why I like to see people come just upon conviction, knowing that they're wrong. They and be made complete. Glory to you. That's right, brother. Come right on up. That's Come right on. Come right out of your seats. Come on now. Glory to His name. That's it, sister. That's a way for Him to be healed and get well now. He do His precious name. Oh, there to my heart was a blood of life. Glory. That's right. Just keep coming. Just keep coming right on up. All glory to His name, that precious name. Oh, there to my heart was a blood of life. Glory to His name. Oh, come. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Oh, cast thy poor soul. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sister, dear. Sweet plunge in today and be made complete. God bless you, son. Glory to his name. They just keep coming, just keep coming. Come right on to the fountain. There's room, plenty of room for us all now. This lovely Lord Jesus, who's here in the power of his resurrection, take all your sins away. The blood of life. Glory to his name. There'll be some more come. There's plenty of room at the fountain here. Won't you come? Glory to if you've took his name in vain, if you've done evil despitefully, used his grace, won't you come now and repent of it? He's willing to forgive you. He that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Won't you come, sinner friend? Come, I persuade you in Christ's name, come be reconciled. While there's time, God bless this little boy coming, weeping, rubbing his little hands in his eyes. Bless his little heart. You know, what the Bible has said, out of the mouth of sucklings and babes, God gets sincere praise. Won't you come now while we sing once more? Come, make, take your place here at the throne, won't you? There's room here for you now. Come, young and old alike, move out tonight. Let's just make this a 100%, not one sinner Go out of the building tonight without being saved. There's no reason for it. Here's the precious Holy Spirit proving himself that he's God right among you. 
and wants to save you, if you believe me to be his prophet or his, his servant, if you believe me to be his servant, his mercy is reaching out tonight with great arms and calling whosoever will, let him come and drink from the fountain of life freely. While we sing it again, won't you come? Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. That's good. So at the sake, yes, he will plunge in today and be made. A little Spanish sister, come right on in here. My brother, come in here. Come right on in. His name, oh, glory to is there some more? Would you come right now? Quickly take your place here at the fountain. Oh. Free to his precious name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to God bless you. That's wonderful. Young people coming this reckless teenage, and yet I'm so glad that we've got young people that's got a heart open for the Holy Spirit yet. I tell you, we've got some fine young people yet left in this world. They sure have. Here comes another coming down. That's right. Just, I'll just love it. It just thrills my heart. This does me better than seeing God heal the sick when He heals the soul, because I know that's eternal. That'll last forever. It's God's truth. Remember, you that's standing here now, you're blessed because that God has spoken to you. God spoke to you. Jesus said these words, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall never come to the judgment, but pass from death to life. A few minutes ago, if you'd have died out there before the service is over, you'd have been lost. If you die now, just as sure as my God is true, You'll come forth on that day. God promised it. No man can come to me, said Jesus, except my Father draws him first. Who was that spoke to you? The Holy Spirit. The same one that knows and discerns the thoughts of the heart. See, he discerns your heart. He would never use my lips. He just spoke to your spirit. And you listen to him. Blessed are you who will do those things. You listen. Come forward. He's your... And all that comes to me, I'll give him eternal life and will raise him up at the last day. That's his blessed promise. God bless you, little lady. Just find your place right in here, honey. That's good. Come on. Has anyone else would like to come while we're waiting? Anyone. We'd just love to have you come up here and we pray with you. If not, let us bow our heads just for a moment of prayer now. Each of you that's standing here, the Heavenly Father has called you. It's His goodness and His mercies to you. You have eternal life now by believing on Him. Now let's just bow our heads while we give Him a word of thanks. Precious Lord, tonight, coming over to the building, I was a little weary. Satan was kind of upsetting me, telling me, don't speak of blind Barnabas. Those people wouldn't understand that. But then way down deep in my soul, I could feel your spirit saying, move on. Just go on. And here tonight, there the, from the results here, and your coming and your presence has brought conviction to the hearts of these people who are standing here. And I've just quoted to them your eternal word which has been proven tonight that it is more powerful than all sin. It raised the sinner from their seat and sent them to the altar. It's more powerful than sin. It overcomes sin and sent them up to make a public confession. And our Lord Jesus Christ said, He that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father and the holy angels. Here they stand as penitent souls. Father, hear the prayer of your unprofitable servant. I commit them into your hands as trophies of this night's service. 
I pray, Father, that your visitation here tonight and bringing them up will now sanctify their hearts from all sin, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, take sin out of their life, even the desire of sin, may it pass from them. And may they also receive the blessed Holy Ghost this night. Tomorrow, to enter upon life anew, to start onto the streets, in the byways, in the schools, wherever they may be tomorrow, at the work, as new creatures in Christ Jesus. Life's a shining. Their faces lit up with the power of God, knowing that they pass from death unto life, that they might lead others and work in this great field of your great economy, Lord. Grant it. Bless them. I commit them into your hands as trophies of your Spirit's grace to us tonight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I want you to do me one more favor. I want you to go right around here so we can meet you. These people standing here with little badges on them. They're called personal workers. We want you to go back here so you can kneel down and thank God for saving you. And then when you do that, I want you to stay there just a few moments and receive the Holy Ghost and come back out in this building here with the rest of the congregation shouting His praises and blessings. It's right here for you. Believe me, as God's servant, it's right here for you while they lead you around. All right. If there's any out there that doesn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and would like for this to be the night that you receive it, will you come go with them and meet us right back here where we'll be with you just in a few moments. Would you come right now, those seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that will move right on through. Go back here. I want each of these converts tonight to take the place. The ministers will be there in a few minutes to invite you to their churches where you can have a home to live, to serve God the rest of your days on earth. Is there any seeking the Holy Ghost tonight would like to be remembered? Raise up your hand and say, Remember me. Brother Branham, remember me. All right? Now let us bow our heads while they're moving back, before we ministers and all go back to be with them just in a little bit, we want to bow our heads for prayer for these handkerchiefs. Let everyone be in prayer. Gracious Lord, on this desk under my right arm and hand lays a great group of handkerchiefs and little parcels and claws that's going to the sick and the afflicted. And they are represented here by someone who has laid them up here, who has faith in thee, who has heard tonight that Elijah sent his staff and it laid upon the child. Perhaps where the great Saint Paul, being very fundamental in his doctrine, must have found this place, and the people in his day seen the Holy Spirit moving in him and know that he was the servant of the Lord. And the Bible says that they took from his body handkerchiefs and aprons, and they were sent to the sick and the afflicted, and evil spirits went out of the people, and great healings were done. Now, Lord, we realize that we are not the St. Paul, but you're still Jesus, the one who healed the sick. We pray that you'll honor these people, Lord, in their, their prayers and in their efforts and in their faith to do such. We are taught in the Scripture that one day God's children was on the march to a promised land that God had promised them, but it was a good land, a healthy land, flowing with milk and honey. And the Red Sea got in their way. But God looked down through that pillar of fire with angry eyes, and the Red Sea got scared, and it moved back. God's promised covenant children walked on across the Red Sea to the promised land. O oh Lord, God... When these handkerchiefs touch the sick, let the angel of God look to the blood of Jesus Christ with angry eyes upon the sickness that's holding these people. And when this little token of faith touches their body, may he turn them loose. And may they journey to that good and healthy place where it's written in the Scriptures, I would above all things that you prosper in health. 
Grant it, Lord, I send it, these claws in the name of Jesus Christ for this purpose. Amen. I believe that each one of them will be healed. Do you? You believe that God answers your prayer? Sure He does. How many of you know this grand old song? It's one we sang at our tabernacle so much. Take the name of Jesus with you. Do you know it? Child of sorrow and of woe. Let's all stand to our feet and sing it now. Take the name of Jesus with you. A child of sorrow.